Welcome to Pro Chats. Um, ko Ngāti Awa Te Iwi, ko Anthony Hoete Tuku Ingoa. My name is Anthony Hoete and today we're here with Martin Cooper and we're going to be talking luxury property development. Thanks Anthony, great to be here. Tell us about some of the latest projects you're working on. Uh, so our latest one's One St Stephen's in mm -hmm. Parnell. 27 apartments being built uh, next to the cathedral in Parnell. We partnered with the church on the land, uh -huh. um, with the, the trust board, so uh, worked with them to to design that through, and yeah, our most ambitious project to date. What makes One St Stephen's so different from other projects that Cooper's worked on? We've basically taken all the learnings from all the last projects and, and just taken everything to the next level. So this is our most ambitious um, project in regards to luxury to date, mm -hmm. uh, starting with the, the design, the materials, um, the experience through purchasing. Mm -hmm. The, the materials on the outside of the building, mm -hmm. uh, the level of amenity provided, types and number of car parks, sizes of apartments. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, just ev everything that we've done has sort of come together to this, to a, to a level of luxury that we, we may not even do for quite a while after this. Can you tell us about how you chose that location? What, what was the thinking about? Um, I guess probably the main thing we always look for when we start a project is views. One St Stephen's is at the top of the ridge yeah. and um, also happens to be surrounded by heritage buildings, so yeah. um, that view's pretty locked in. So that was that was the main reason, is just was was views and, cent and centrality to, to Auckland. So, um, you know, Parnell's Auckland's oldest suburb. It's about as close as you can get to the city without being in the city for people that, that don't want to be in there. Mm. Um, and then you've got choice, so there's... Everything from down to Mechanics Bay and getting a helicopter. Uh, the ferry's not too far away to get mm. out to Waiheke if you're not in a helicopter. Mm. Uh, if you do want to drive, there's the the motorways right at the bottom of, of Parnell. You can mm. shoot off to a beach house easy. Um, and then locally, it's just, you know, the Domain's one of the best parks in, in Auckland. You can also walk to the museum. How did you knit um, sort of a contemporary uh, apartment in with a historic urban fabric? Great difficulty. Um, mm. No, it was actually quite an enjoyable process. We spent a lot of time thinking about the houses in the area right. and how do we do something that is a, you know, a, a vertical take on, on those houses or those buildings. And we actually, with One St Stephen's, we also consulted with um, Heritage New Zealand, mm. so around choice of materials and where we were going. And that was a really, really good discussion. Uh, um, one one thing I learned is the worst thing you can do is try and copy something. Mm. The the key there is to be sympathetic uh, and not try and copy it. So that's where that's right. the use of the stone is the same stone that's similar to other buildings in the area, but we haven't copied how it's been. That's right. Everything it, building should originate or be identifiable with the period in which they came yeah. from. Yeah, so we've used brick, which right. is heavily used in the cathedral next door. Yeah, so that was a quite a good symbiotic relationship between the cathedral, the church, and and the developer. Right? Yep, so that was a big part of, um, I guess, our us getting the land, was mm. willingness to work with them to, you know, uh, design something that was complementary. Mm. Um, they, they put some requirements on us and we had some from them and I think we've ended up with a really good result. If we would take a, uh, an elevator from the basement to the penthouse, what layers of quality would we pass through? Uh, so starting in the basement, we've got uh, high-end finishes in the basement, uh, oversized car parks, uh, car detailing bay, dog wash area. Dog wash. Um, Drop-off pickup area for, for Ubers and taxis. Um, ground floor, we've got private dining, private lounge, uh, private bar, wellness area with a, a hot tub, uh, sauna, steam room, um, little kitchenette for people who are in the pool and dining area there, um, outdoor dining area. Then we've got on the outside of the building, we're using natural materials largely, so um, natural stone and glazed brick is a predominant cladding material. Then uh, I guess moving through the lobbies, uh, a lot of materials of natural stone, uh, veneer. By the time you get up to lobbies, um, taking them to the next level again. And then inside the apartments, um, focus on the master suites, big walk-in wardrobes for all the master suites, nice timber, uh, timber look to them. Um, 
full gig in our kitchens and laundries. First time we've ever been able to do that. So that's been pretty exciting. Mike, can you just take us through a, a virtual walkthrough, you know, uh, through one of the one of the apartments? So our big focus is always starting from outside the front door. W when you're opening the front door to greet someone, mm. um, what does that start like? What are the lobbies like? And then once you move inside the apartments, always trying to create a sense of arrival. Mm -hmm. And then we kind of move from there into, I guess, really what we still see is the, the heart of the apartment, which is the, the kitchen dining lounge. We start with those and the master suites. Um, they're, the, they're the main focus, and then we, we go from there. So one St Stephen's, we've got every kitchen has a scullery or full second sort of kitchen in the background. And we really spend a lot of time um, working through the design of those, the right appliances in the right locations. Um, we generally build a full kitchen in the in the mm. show suite so they can see it. Mm. Um, and then if they've got any questions after that, we often send them down to, to Unza House to, to have a look at what we're doing and meet the team at, at Unza House um, who, who look after us well. And um, yeah, we've never had any complaints as a result of that. So um, mm. it's a fantastic facility for, for us to send people to to and see the, what they're doing. And the kitchen's often the, the sort of um, social centre point and also the showcase of the house too. So um, there is some sort of flexibility in uh, tailoring the tastes of the individual. You say you send them... We often do two colour schemes so yeah. um, okay. for uh, for them. Um, and, and we also know that not everyone's the same, so we do have some flexibility in um, where people want sinks and sculleries and... Um, hot and cold taps tend to be the big one, but we often get the feedback of because we've we spent so much time looking at them that we um, we actually don't get that many changes when All it right. comes to them. Um, you sound like you were heavily involved in that design process. Yep, probably to the yes <laughs> to the annoyance of the uh, to the uh, architect, I imagine. Um, uh, some would say annoyance. We've got a great relationship with the architect, and, yeah. and the thing is, is we know what our buyers are looking for. So yeah. um, it actually just makes for a really good process because we just start with a, um, this is what we did last time. What are we going to do this time? And it's you actually don't waste time. We have a really close working relationship with a lot of our partners. So yeah. we've got the same subcontractors done all our uh, kitchens, laundries, wardrobes for the last yeah. four projects. So they actually attend the design meetings with us to work out how we can right. uh, maximise what we what we can deliver. And it's it's a really good level of collaboration. So, Martin, I wonder if you could tell us about some of your innovative collaborations that are going on at One St Stephen's Ave. Um, so one of them, I guess, is in the basement. Mm -hmm. um, we've modelled that on a, a leading car dealership showroom, finding a space where people are proud to, to park nice cars, mm -hmm. a design where we've particularly the lower basement. We've put in um, a nice ceiling, feature lighting, um, all, all things that cost a fair bit of money and time, um, mm. but will elevate the level for, for people um, moving forward so that you can really get a sense of, um, I guess, what luxury is. And mm. So it's taking often one of the, let's say, less thought about spaces in a, in a building, the basement car park. And giving it a bit of bling. And and a practical side too. So, mm. you know, we've gone to car parks are ten percent bigger than normal. Mm. So um, really understanding how people get in and out of the cars. Um, cars are a lot of cars and luxury areas are bigger than normal. And other collaborations? What about in the uh, catering and comedy and hospitality? So we've worked with Chef Des Harris mm. on the um, on the kitchen in the private dining space. So we worked with him as to how we would, or how he would deliver, a, I guess, a, a, an exceptional private fine dining experience for people without having to, to go into your apartment. So he worked with us to uh, design the, the kitchen out the back for um, layout appliances. So it's we've fully kitted that out with, with gagging our appliances mm. for him um, and then Worked with him out the front of the in the actual um, dining area as to mm. how he would um, plate up, display things, mm. warming drawers. We've learned are important for keeping plates warm for food. Speaking of Gaganau, I heard that one of the ovens in there is some sort of work of art. What, what is that oven? That's Gaganau's best oven. Um, I, I guess we see our kitchens as as beautiful statement pieces in the middle of the apartment, um, and that's the best statement piece. And mm. You know, in the statement kitchen, we designed the apartments. You mm -hmm. know, around people having art, and um, 
if you want the best, then um, that's it for Gaganau. So we we had the idea of getting it into one apartment and we ended up putting it in six. Again, wonderful, um, wonderful things done well. Mm. Uh, so Martin, I wonder if you could tell us about um, where your inspiration comes from around the world. With density, we probably look to a lot of the, the more dense cities around the world. But we also take a lot of inspiration from luxury projects, not necessarily just residential. So yeah. um, hotels um, uh, and just luxury brands, understanding, you know, you can, you can learn a lot by going into a, um, a high-end mm. retail store around what people are used to. And it's really, um, really interesting how you transfer knowledge and experience from one, say, quality space, restaurants, hotels, uh, shops, even hairdressers, and you can transfer that into a kind of... Yeah, I mean, I guess one, one of the things that we've learned, a, oh, I've learned a lot about about luxury is it's not just about visual, it's about touch and feel and, mm. you know, the quality of the materials that you're touching. Mm. Um, you can do a really beautiful space, but then you grab that door handle and mm. it doesn't feel nice. You, that can ruin, you know, change the mm. experience. And an apartment building has got to be innately um, better than an individual single-family dwelling, isn't it? You've got uh, two, maybe three external skins. You've got uh, um, some apartment above you, apartment below you. So the thermal envelope is pretty good. Yeah, we we commonly get feedback that so it takes a while for a building to warm up. Mm. So it takes about I don't know six to twelve months, and the, mm. the building just absorbs creates its own thermal mass over time. Mm -hmm. And um, we often get told, uh, I mean, a lot of our, we try not to have single aspect apartments, so mm -hmm. um, somewhere where you can generate a cross through breeze. Mm -hmm. That's more important, we think, than anything else we can do. Mm -hmm. um, and the other one, with, with that time for it to heat up, the building, we're actually finding from a lot of our buyers when we go back and talk to them, they don't run the air conditioning in winter mm. and they just use it for cooling in summer. Mm. But you're so right about um, sustainability often being conceived of as the uh, the environmental con you know, consideration, um, but also it can be the social one. And as you say, you can have um, so social sustainable, social sustainability because the people inside your buildings love love to be in them. They, they look after the buildings and they, you know, they nurture them. Yeah, I think that's one of the big things about um, uh, I guess apartment buildings and, and and working right to bring people together from the start is the more comfortable you are in those spaces, the more you know other people in the building, um, the happier you are, and, mm. and the happier you are, the more um, I think the more sustainable you know things are long term. So what I want to know is about the one. What is the one? Uh, so the one's our main penthouse at. Uh, one's at Stevens. How big? 540 square metres. Uh, how many car parks, spaces? Uh, six, up to eight if you want. Um, um, good. How much? 22 and a half million, interest over. So, um, yeah, be New Zealand's most expensive apartment. Uh, wow. It's four bed, four and a half bathroom, uh, master suites, 80 square metres, so size of some two bedroom apartments, two lounges, Formal dining, media room, uh, wine cellar, uh, panoramic view. So it's sort of so. I guess from the the main dining space, you can see your lounge space. You can see from Waiheke round to Sky Tower, wow. and all the bits in between. Wow. So yeah. So just all our learnings from uh, I guess luxury and and putting that into into one apartment. So it's going to be. One of one of New Zealand's most amazing residences when it's when it's finished. So, um, who's behind One St. Stephen's? Uh, myself and Mike Sullivan. Uh, so we've got uh, two brands, uh, experiences by Coopers and Countrywide Residences, and mm. uh, this is our fourth project together, and won't be our last. What advice would you give to an up and coming developer? Well, Trust your gut. Short term decisions hurt developers, and. So if you've got good partners, good people you work with, um, and you take a, a longer term view of things, both how you structure things, um, what you're developing, um, how you do it, then that'll put you in a good state because it's, if you'd told me how hard it was, uh, I wouldn't have believed you. Mm. And it's, it's not an easy thing. Mm. Um, a lot of fun and very rewarding. Mm. Um, and 
but yeah, it's um, it's having the right people and um, you know, and, and probably the other really key piece is work out who your customer is and what do they want. And mm. that's you know, you can spend a lot of time boxing at shadows. Um, whether you're a, your clients are a first home buyer, an investor, a middle of the you know um, middle of their housing journey, or a, or the luxury end, or the budget end, whatever whatever you think your your profile is, just research it to death as to what you think they want, mm. and then how do you give them more than they think they need? So, what do you love most about what you do? Um, I love the creative bit up front, getting to market. Is the bit enjoy and the work up to that is mm. the bit I enjoy the most, and then mm. and then seeing people once they've moved in. And I guess you're already doing that thing, which I always suggests underlines all design research is that you're having fun. Yeah, you seem to be enjoying it. No? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's certain days where you bang your head against the wall, Pick or the can. Um, you know, it's it's not without its stresses. Property development, mm -hmm. um, but. At the end of the day, you're, I, I do it because I love it. always wanted to do it. Mm. Well, I just want to say thank you. Thank you. Namahi kia koe, Martin. Thank you so much for coming on Pro Chats and enlightening us. And if somebody dabbled in that, you know, a much smaller scale, I've certainly learned a lot and I'll be taking them out into the world of property. Um, but no, thank you. Thank you for your generosity and uh, letting us know about the world of luxury property development. Thanks. It's been great talking.